The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Following our customary procedure, the next few moments are devoted to silent prayer in order that we might be properly and academically prepared to concentrate on the teaching of the Word of God. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of making use of this opportunity once again of studying your word in obedience to your mandate. We are living here in this country where the laws of the divine establishment sustain the freedom to worship, to assimilate your word, and again be given the opportunity of accelerating in our advance to maturity. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome everyone to our daily Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Malbidu Evangelistic Ministry. And uh, today we are going to continue our study on uh, the doctrine about the problems in life. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the problems in life. Okay? Now, we have said that <coughs> we try to recall what happened to Job when it comes to the problems in life, disasters in life. He did not fail when the disasters hit him. He even bravely said, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what God wants a believer to experience. Now, when disasters come, what we usually feel is panic. But there are a lot of biblical passages and verses that give us regarding this. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and ter or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 8, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. In Isaiah 41.10, <clears throat> Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Also in Psalm 56, verse 3, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. You see, faith here is a requirement in reverse concentrating Bible doctrine. Now what does God's word say? If God is with us, who can be against us? In the book of Exodus, the Jews saw Pharaoh's soldiers. That's the problem. But Moses saw the solution to the problem. The Jews were victims of the fear panic ploy. Fear and faith, as we know, are mutually exclusive. Adversity is the outside pressure of life, whereas stress is the inside pressure of life. Adversity is inevitable, 
but stress is optional. You see, every believer should take the responsibility for every decision he makes. Also remember, human solution is no solution. Only divine solution is the real and genuine solution. The next point we will take up is the third categorical problem, which is rejection. Now, rejection by our friends or rejection by our loved ones. When you are rejected, what do you feel? The answer? Self-pity. Then, you become depressed, right? Now, when we are rejected, that means somebody is rejecting us. There is a rejecter and there is a rejectee, meaning discarded, set aside, excluded, eliminated. So there is a problem in being rejected, right? One who is rejected becomes stressed and he feels jilted or dejected. This is destructive to the spiritual life. But if a believer has personal love for God, this is not a problem to him. In other words, the believer needs to have Bible doctrine metabolized in order to avoid being affected when he is rejected in life. In terms of rejection, there is a rejector and there is a rejectee. It's either you are the rejector or the rejectee. Whatever or wherever you are, the first thing that should be considered is the cause of that rejection. The cause is the problem. When it comes to problems, you either use God's problem-solving devices or your human problem-solving device. But remember the principle. Human solution is no solution. Only divine solution is the real and guaranteed solution. We have our volition to use. So, it's a matter of choice. You must consider this principle. Adversity is inevitable. Stress is optional. A rejectee is the one being rejected. A rejecter is the one who rejects. Now, we believers are admonished by God's word to be persistent in the cognition, metabolization, and application of Bible doctrine and let it circulate in the stream of consciousness. You see, in the life of a believer, there are many problems that would crop up. And as they hit the believer's life, God's divine assets and divine weapons for him to use are right there in the right lobe of the mentality of his soul. It is for the believer to make the outside pressure of adversities internally and become stressed to him, or respond them with the use of God the Holy Spirit's enabling power. Hence, it all depends on the believer's volition. Remember the three stages of reactions, denial, repression, and projection. You know what? We believers are admonished to be sure we are inside the divine dinosphere, so that when we make any decision, we are inside the area of strength. Surely, our decision would be right and good. Our reaction to rejection will complicate our life. Thus, forget Bible doctrine to use, we become miserable. Now, let's not forget one thing in terms of this, impersonal love. When we use this feeling of the Holy Spirit love, our spiritual life continues to be solid and moving forward. Life for the believer becomes complicated 
when he fragments because of reaction to rejection. Now, what do you mean by iconoclastic arrogance? Well, iconoclastic arrogance means when we have an idol, a role model, then he later on rejects you. We likewise reject him as our reaction. We have already said that there is a problem in being rejected in life. Remember, if there is a rejector, there will always be a rejectee. Once the rejectee reacts to the rejector because he has nothing to lean on, nothing to use, and is being rejected, he becomes a loser. Thus, the believer needs to have Bible doctrine in his soul, so he would be able to respond, not react, to the rejector. The believer has to learn, metabolize, and apply Bible doctrine to be a winner in this area of being rejected. In short, he should learn the ten problem-solving devices that God has provided him to use. We have to extrapolate all the doctrinal rationales when facing any problem in life. Yes, there are myriads of problems, be it in marriage, in business, in peers, etc. And we need not react to those problems, but just respond. We will continue this discussion tomorrow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of uh, making use of this privilege of examining these things together, which are so important. May God the Holy Spirit then challenge us to these things and so we can persist in our study. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. <music>